The arrival of the missionaries in Abami had caused a considerable stir. In the surrounding towns and villages, their activities were a source of great sorrow, not only to the adherents of the traditional religion, but to the leaders of the clan. Many believed that the strange faith would not last. After all, none of the converts was a man of substance. None, they said, was a man of title. They were mostly the kind of people that were called a fulefu, worthless, empty men. O oh Lord, we kneel here in your sight and in your mission to win the hearts of the people to your cause. We come in continuation of your crusade as your chosen people. You have said that only those who believe in your cause will see your righteousness and enter into the kingdom of heaven. We are prepared to lay down our lives for that cause. That your word may be spread among all the heathen in every nook and corner of this land. O oh Lord, the people of Abame killed one of our number who came here in peace. And now we come to Abame that we may win their hearts to you for the glory of the Lord God Almighty forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Yes, the imagery of Anifulefu in the language of the clan was a man who sold his machet and wore the sheath to battle. Chielo, the priestess of Agbala, called the converts the excrement of the clan and the new faith the mad dog that had come to eat it up. ago during the planting season a white man had come to Abame he was not an albino the first people who saw him ran away but the fearless ones moved close to him and touched him he was riding on an iron horse when he approached the village the elders quickly consulted their oracle this strange man the oracle told them would break their clan and spread destruction among them in fact, the white man was the forerunner of others like him who would descend on the clan like locusts. The elders would not take chances. The oracle had warned them, so the white man must be killed, and his iron horse was therefore hung on the silk cutting tree. For a long time, nothing happened. <laughs> The missionaries had told the villagers that the true God lived on high and that all men, when they died, went before him for judgment. Evil men and all the heathen, who in their blindness bowed to wood and stone, were thrown into a fire that burned like palm oil. But the good men who worshipped the true God of the white man lived forever in his happy kingdom. <laughs> The men are ready, sir. Ready for your inspection and instruction, sir. Thank you. I will inspect them now. Thank you. 
Now, men, you know why we are here. We are here to preserve the Queen's peace in this land. I am here as the Queen's representative. She expects me and she expects you to preserve the faith and to preserve the law so that this land can be peaceful. Now, when we get to Abame, we shall surround the market. And remember, we are here to keep law and order. Sergeant. Stop! Body break! Break! Mike! Left! Right! Left! Right! Left! Go down! Go down! Go down! Many people in Abame did not believe the white man because his god was neither the goddess of the earth, the god of the sky, nor a majora of the thunderbolt. Many feared the anger and reprisals in neglecting their gods. The missionaries persevered with their mission, picking up converts along the way. For the converts, the words of the hymns were like drops of frozen rain melting on the dry plate of the panting earth. The people of Abame had settled for peaceful coexistence so long as the missionaries keep within the evil forest shared by lepers, smallpox victims, evil medicine men and outcasts. Apart from the church, the white man also brought a system of government to the people. When the people of Abame therefore killed the first white man and hung his iron horse on the silk cotton tree, the white man's government showed its presence. You know the plan? All your men to surround the market. Body, go. Take your men to the left flank. Go, go, go. Hurry! Back up! One, two, three. Take the left flank. Bring up here. Take it, take it. Hurry up! Every clan and village had its evil forests. In it were buried all those who died of the really evil diseases like leprosy and smallpox. It was the dumping ground for the potent fetishes of the great medicine men when they died. An evil forest was therefore alive with sinister forces and powers of darkness. It was in such a forest that the missionaries were permitted to build their place of worship or shrine as some inhabitants called it. O oh Lord, we are prepared to lay down our lives for your sake in order to spread your word among the heathen in all corners of this land. And now we come to Abame to win the hearts of the people for the Lord so that his glory may triumph forever and ever. <laughs>
Umafia kwenu? Yeah. Kwenu? Yeah. Kwenu? Yeah. Kwezu wenu? Yeah. Oh. Oh. We must be prepared for the events happening around us. We should wake before we die. And we should not die. We must recall a Bubedike to lead us against those strangers who have overrun towns and villages in our neighborhood. What you say is what I say. Thank you, Wilfred. Abame is dead under the bloodshed of evil strangers. We shall not let this happen to us. We should call the people of Abame and all the people around us to wage a battle and war against these mercenaries of evil and death before they overrun us, our children and our culture. Thank you. Let the use of home mafia be called together. Eh? For we must fight and fight and never die. We need a conquer. <laughs> the, the gods will descend their wrath on our people if we recall Okonkwo from his exile. Ah. We must appease the gods to survive. Hmm. It is only two years since he went on his exile. He has not even spent half of the period of the exile. Oh, well, yes, Must we defend time to please the monsters of death who have descended on our soil and on our people? We cannot recall him. Till maybe he has spent at least five of his seven years. To do otherwise is to call our deaths from the hands of the gods of this land. Exactly. And that is to die in broken old age. Mm. Master Berika, mm? you told me that uh, you had to visit Okonkwa to see how he is with his family. Will you still go? Indeed I shall. If that is true, Oberika, then greet Okonkwa for us. Tell him about Abame, but never mention his recall. Tell him about the anxieties of his people. had been permitted 
to take as much land as they cared to take. After all, they would all be dead within four days. But as the days turned into weeks and weeks into months, and none of the followers of the new faith had died, many more converts were won by the white man for his God in the heavens. Let us pray, and may the Lord bless you all. Bless you, my people, for participating in this mission to win this land for the Lord. And let us pray that we are given the energy and the strength to see the task through to the finish, till the whole land is the Lord. But let us also not forget the need for reconciliation and mercy. My people, we have with us today the District Commissioner, and I pray that the Lord will give him the strength to show mercy and justice as he performs his duty. We will cooperate with the government it's just so long as the government shows a due sense of justice and fair play. Also, no betrayal na what is in the now, I can in Ayaka, no one in our room, but I'm in a church. You know, I can in Ayaka, what's a good guy in a bus, and I got you, Bonina. Who are you? Lord bless you all. Okay. 
this man. So he must cook the best food that we have. He likes rounded yam with pita leaf soup and dry asa fish. Huh? So I want him to eat and eat and stay here. He must sleep here tonight. Okay. Well, Erika. Hmm? <laughs> oh. Now, Chendo, I greet you. This is my great friend, Obi Erika, the one I have always talked to you about. Well, Obi Erika, Chendo, I greet you. My son told me about you, and I'm glad you have decided to visit us. Thank you. I know your father, Iweka. He was a great man. He had many friends in this clan, and he came to visit them quite often. Those were the good days when men had friends in distant clans. Your generation does not know that. You stay at home, afraid of your next door neighbors. Even a man's motherland is strange to him nowadays. I am old and I like to talk. That's what I'm good for now. These young men with your friend are his friends and from Mumofia, I believe. Yes, my gender. Welcome, my sons. Thank you, boyfriend gender. Emine? Nine. Ezima? Already two years since we made that long journey to Mbanta. You know, sometimes I used to think of that journey and I say to myself, what would we have done if the kinsmen of Okonkwa's mother were all dead? And what would we have done starting a new life? No money, no farmland, no houses, just nothing just to begin a new life with. Yes, my children, people travel more in those days. There is not a single clan in this part that I do not know very well. Aninta, Umazu, Ikocha, Ilumelu. I know them very well. Have you heard that Abame is no more? What? How is that? <laughs> Abame has been wiped out. 
It is a strange and terrible story. If I had not seen the few survivors with my own eyes, or heard their story with my own ears, I would not have believed. Was it not on a K that they fled into Umofia? Yes, it was a great tragedy. You see, three months ago, on an AK market day, a band of fugitives fled into Umofia. Some of them were sons of the land whose mothers had been buried with us. But there were some who came because they had friends and others who thought they had nowhere else to run to. And they came into Umofia with a tale of woe. <sighs> During the last planting season, A white man had come into that clan. An albino? No, he was not an albino. He was quite different. And he was riding an iron horse. Oracles had said that a strange man would visit their clan and spread the destruction. And some other white men would follow his way. And the first white man was their harbinger, sent to survey the terrain. Well, the people. The people did not understand the man's language. And worse still, they thought that his iron horse would run away. Then, then they killed the white man and hung his iron horse on their sacred silk cutting tree. <laughs> For many market days, nothing happened. Even after the planting season. Then, they used to have a big market on a four market day in Abani. That is when the whole clan gathers together. That was the day it happened. A white man and a number of people surrounded the market. They must have used a very powerful medicine to surround the market without the people even knowing until the market was full. Then, they started to shoot. They started to shoot. Everybody was killed, except the old and the sick who were at home. And a few who were very lucky because their chi were wide awake. It was a terrible day. And where were all the men? They would have come out of their houses and taken up arms in defense of their fatherland. What were they living for if they could not shed the last drop of their blood in defense of their wife, their children? Why must a man turn into a woman in the face of such a, a force that threatens his very existence, his culture, his integrity, his stability? The clan is completely empty. They deserved it. They deserved it because they had no pride to defend even their own fatherland, even their children. Even the sacred fish in their mysterious lake has fled, and the lake has turned the color of blood. A great evil has come upon your clan, as the oracles have warned. Never kill a man who says nothing. Those men from Abame were fools. What did they know about the man? I'll tell you a story. Mother Kite once sent her daughter to bring food. She went and brought back a duckling. You've done very well, said Mother Kite to her daughter. But tell me, what did the mother of this duckling say when you swooped and carried away its child? It said nothing. It simply walked away, said the daughter. Then you must return the duckling, said Mother Kite. There is something ominous about the silence. And so, Dr. Kite returned the duckling and took a chick instead. What did the mother of the chick do? Asked the old kite. It cried and raved and cursed me, said the daughter. Then we can eat the chick. There is nothing to fear from a man who shouts. Those men from Abame were fools. 
Yes. These men were fools because they had been warned that danger was ahead. They should have armed themselves with their ma machets even when they went to the markets. Hmm. They have paid for their foolishness. But I'm greatly afraid. Afraid? Yes. Why? You see, we have heard of white men who made those powerful guns and made those strong drinks and took away slaves across the seas. But we never thought that those stories were true. There is no story which is not true. The world has no end. We have albino amongst us. What is good amongst us may be an abomination with others. Do you not think that they came to our clan by mistake? Or that they strayed in a, in a strange land, thinking that everybody is like them? Your friends must be tired and hungry. I hope you have prepared some good food for them. May the years pass away fast so that we can go back home to Morphia and our people before we grow old. Thank you and your household for your hospitality. I'm very glad to see that you have settled down. My part is to see how you are with your family and to bring you some good news. The elders of Umofia and all our people remember you. They think of your welfare and that of your family. I thank them. I think of them always. The elders and the people of Umuafia. You see those two bags in your room? They contain money from your yams. I sold the big ones as soon as you left. And later, the smaller ones and gave the rest to sharecroppers. I thought you would need them, so I brought the money. Who knows? Maybe someday some green men will come into our clan and shoot us. <laughs> God will never permit that, Obi Erika. <laughs> oh, Erika. Hmm? I don't know how to thank you. Why don't you kill one of your sons for me? That will not be enough. Then kill yourself. All right. Uh, I shall not say thank you. <laughs> Very guy, I thank you, and uh, I thank the people of Umuafia. Oh, Erika. Perhaps I shall never see my homeland, Umuafia, town of warriors again. Why have the gods condemned me to this? Look at me, Ebubedike, languishing in exile, while death and destruction overtake Abame and loom over Umuafia. Ubirika, sometimes I stand here looking above the mountains beyond the valleys towards Umuafia, my hometown. And I said to myself, when shall I ever get to Umuafia again? As I stand there looking, tears fill my eyes. My eyes stretch beyond my vision, and my hands only within my eyes. I look towards Umuafia, separated from me by hills and valleys and time. 
Obi Erika. So the invaders have overrun our band. Indeed they have. And what are our people doing, Obi Erika? Are they waiting till we are all dead? Are they waiting till the bones of our dead ancestors rise from their graves in defense of our fatherland and our heritage? Obi Erika, where are the warriors of Omofia? We have met and we prepare, but without you, Ebubidike. Conqueror of Isike, roar and flame. Oh, what have the gods done that you... You languish in exile, while we ponder in the gaze and threat of evil and the perpetrators. Obi Erika, that money you brought, that money is not for me, Obi Erika. You will take back that money, Obi Erika, to Omofia. Give that money to the warriors of Omofia. Tell them to prepare for war. Tell them to prepare to defend our land, Obierika. Tell them never to give up our land. While I stay here languishing in exile, my people have been invaded and threatened with extinction. Obierika, tell them never to allow what happened to Abame to happen to them. Tell them never to give up our land, Obierika. Tell them to leave nothing undone. They must make sure that the enemy is driven completely out of our land, Obierika. What are we doing, my people, my people? What are we waiting for, my people? Are we waiting for our ancestors to break from the noble graves? Are we waiting for our ancestors to wake from the graves to defend and protect us, to protect our land and our health? of land we really want it we want it to have a church on it to be able to win more souls for god i will try <laughs> The missionaries want a piece of land to build a shrine. They have approached us and requested for a piece of land on which to build a shrine. I'm sure they do not understand. We shall give them a piece of land. Let us give them a portion of the evil forest, the boast of victory over death. Let us give them a real battlefield 
on which they could show their victory. Let us call them and inform them accordingly. We have whispered together. We offer you as much as you care to take of the evil forest. That is our decision. We thank you. We'll start clearing it tomorrow. We thank you. May the light of the Lord shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. 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 My missionaries and I are your brothers. All of us are sons of the Almighty God. The one and the only living God. The creator of all the world and all the men and all the women. You worship false gods, gods of wood, gods of stone. There is only one true God. He lives on high. And all men who die will go to him for judgment. Evil men and all heathens who worship wood and stone, he will throw into a fire that burns like palm oil. But good men who worship the true God will live with him forever in his happy land. We have been sent by this great God to ask you to turn away from your evil ways and your false gods. Turn to him so that you may be saved when you die. Ask the white man, which is this god of his? Is it the goddess of the earth, the god of the sky, Amadiora of the thunderbolt, or what? All of the gods that you have named are not gods at all. They are gods of deceit who tell you to kill your fellow men and your children. The true God has made the earth and the sky and you and me and all, all of us. Your gods are not 
alive, so they cannot harm you. They are only wood. They are only stone. Now, Chini no one ever had run on how long. I have a house on cook, no cute. Yeah, but what if I had a moon and all of it is what Chinek and Kevin Eagle. You told us that there was only one God. Now you tell us he has a son. Then he must have a wife then. I never said that he had a wife. Hmm. Your God has a wife. <laughs> Your God has a wife. <laughs> His God has a wife. <laughs> What are you doing here? I am one of them. And uh, how is your father? I don't know him. He is not my father. <gasps> Maziakuna, we thank you for welcoming us to your compound. We pray that God will let his light shine on you and your household and be gracious to you. Amen. Thank you, white man. You said there is one supreme God who made heaven and earth. We also believe in him, and we call him Chuku. He made the whole world, and the gods, too. There are no other gods. Chuku is the only god. All of the other gods are false gods. Your district commissioner, he was sent here by your king. No, Mazakuna. They have a queen, not a king. That's all right. The queen sends his messenger, the commissioner. And he comes here and appoints court messengers and servants. And so is the same thing with Chuku. He appoints other gods so that they can assist him because the work is too much for one person. You should not think of him as one person. It is because you do so that you imagine he must need helpers. No, 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 it is not so. We approach a great man through his servant. And when the servant fails, we go to the right source for help. That is why our fathers recognized that Chuku was the overlord. And that was why many of them gave their children the name Chukuka. Chuku is supreme. Maziakuna, our school is almost ready. We would like for you to send your children to this school. The leaders of the country of the future will be men and women who know how to read and to write 
If Umwafia does not send their children to school, strangers will come from distant places to rule them. We must not fall apart. 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 Fall apart. Fall apart. Everybody, as I was saying earlier in the day, the failure of elders to warn the youth of impending disaster brings death to them. But when they refuse to hear the warning, they call for their own death. As for me, those who want to join the dance of death, let them join. So we leave it at that, eh? The white man says his God is superior. The foolish ones in our clan believe him. And so we just watch helplessly. Even the hen will rave and curse and peck at the kite as it swoops down to attack its cheek. Let's attack them. That's what I say. But we can't attack them without a pretext. They came without arms. Our people who joined them were not forced to. Oh. So you do not see the danger in it. You do not see the danger in it. Even the antelope said he is not angry with the hunter that shot at it but with the dog that chases out of its hiding. I agree with you. But it will blow over when our gods wake up in vengeance. Words of a senseless man. A sensible man will stand up in defense of his values. The white man is fighting for his own gods. Um, if only our people will treat them with the contempt and disdain they deserve. Um, contempt and disdain. Is that what we shall tell our ancestors? That the white man invaded us and desecrated our culture and we treated him with contempt and disdain. To fear! That's an abomination. Amigo? 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 Is it well? You look like you've seen a ghost. A ghost? Would have been a preferable sight. My tongue is tied. I cannot say it. Whatever it is, let's see I eat. The year I know more than Tigus and bad news. Huh? If you did not want us to hear it, Amiku, why did you come here? Well, huh? Nothing again can be new under the sun. Eh? Che! The world will soon turn upside down. Of all people, your son! God, there must be something fetish about this new religion. I have said it before! My son, my own son, he has joined them. <laughs> Contempt and disdain, he said. That was your counsel, wasn't it? Contempt and disdain. I told you. I told you, Nze. It is not your son, Nze. It is Moye, your first son, Okonkwo. It is well. What is my son Moye doing with those devils? It is good. I have always said that I have a useless son.
But my son, did you not see him there? They are always together here in Oye. I did not see him. I will find out myself. Everybody okay? going to do about it, the Congo. You must not allow him. The warrior is not yet done. Breaker! Breaker! Nine, did you call me? Yes, I did. Where is your son? Good job, Maria. I thought... Go and fetch him wherever he is. Did anything happen, my lord? What is he doing with the son of Uzzah? Eh? I have warned Moye not to be with the son of Uzzah. Moye will not listen. I have pleaded with Moye to be near his father. Moye will not listen. No, I'm back. Moye. My greetings. Moye. Come here. I said, come here. Come here! Come here. Where have you been? Where have you been? I'll tell you I kill you. Where have you been? Leave that boy alone. You will not smear your hand with the blood of your son. Just may the Lord forbid. Worship it. I think it has no powers like the teacher said. But why kill it? The teacher will know that I am fully committed to his religion. He will recommend me for baptism. I will no longer be required to recite the catechism before I'm considered eligible for the holy water of God. You may kill it if you wish. 
But you will still learn your catechism. Do you know how long it took me to learn the little I know? For me to be a just suitable for baptism? Two years and eight months. I know. I know. But Daniel, if I kill it and nothing happens to me, then I will bring all my household and kinsmen. You can't bring all your household. You have three wives. They will help swell our membership. One of my wives is already with us. I kept the rest in case... Uh... You can't have more than one wife in the church. It is against the laws of the church. But what is wrong with having two or more wives? It is a mark of prosperity. I do not know. But you will bring only one. The others will not be allowed to join. What Kiaga told us the other day, that all are equal in the eyes of God. Even we now have outcasts, I mean Jews, in our fold, don't we? I learned that in the Catechism class. It is still a puzzle to me. Daniel. Yes. Maybe if I kill the royal title, they will allow all my wives. It will be the greatest blow to the hiddens. You refuse your food. What then will you eat? You are not ill, I hope. Would you like some cock or some frog? Yes, I think you need something special. The feast is still some two months away. For two days, you lay coiled up your tree. Refusing your meals. I will go and tell the priest. He alone can divine your mood. No more be needed to recite the catechism before I'm considered eligible for the holy water of God. No! Yay! 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 <laughs> you? You have called the object? Do you come here? You abandoned the gods of your ancestors to follow the gods of the white man. Now stand out of my way! Fra, you are the worshiper! Messenger of peace, messenger of the mother goddess, the hen protects her chicks from the talons of the hawk. See, see what the albino has done. Avenge, I pray, mother goddess, the death of your royal python. Yeah. When they are 
Albino came to us preaching the foreign god. You laughed at him. You gave him land to build his shrine. <coughs> Our sons and daughters joined him. I warned you. I, okay, Kobago, warned you. But did you listen to me? So, why do we now have to cry? Obuago, in truth you speak. <coughs> when the gray hair senses danger but does not speak, it is dead to him. But when he will not be listened to, by the same token, it is to the death of his hearers. Our ancestors are watching us. Yesterday, the royal python was murdered. Today, the Akkad challenged the Jalal. Tomorrow, maybe, Mbanta will be forced to flee from the land of Afobias. To Fiakwa! The people of our clan, I'm on my feet again. Mbanta breeds men. Brave and courageous. The white man parades his organ the same way as you and I. If he is a man, so are we also. If he has powerful medicine, we have his equals here, here, here. He must be cut off, root and branch. When a chick is crying as it is caught, fast in the talons of a kite. It is not that it ever hopes again to taste freedom. It is rather that the rest of the world would hear our innocence. It is not our custom to fight for our gods. Let us not presume to do so now. Are you saying a way few change that the air with the albino has found should spread unchecked? No, 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 no. I am saying no such thing. But if a man kills the sacred python, the matter lies between him and the god. If we put ourselves between the god and his victim, we may receive blows intended for the offender. When a man blasphemes, what do we do? <coughs> do we go and stop his mouth? No! We put fingers in our ears to stop us hearing. That is the wise action. Well, yeah. 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 Mother Gwen! Yeah. Mother Gwen! Yeah. Mother Gwen! Yeah. Brethren of my mother, I salute you. Fathers of my mother, I greet all of you. It bleeds my heart to note that fathers of my mother can no longer speak with one voice. The albino has divided you, and you are now falling apart. Mbanta, you are now falling apart. 
For seven years I have lived with you. And what I see grieves my heart. I do not want to be like the sympathizer who cries louder than the bereaved. But if a man should come in front of my house and defecate, what do I do? Close my eyes and pretend it's not there? And grab a stick and smash his head? That's what a man should do. Every day the Albino and his slaves are pouring filth on us. And we're all sitting by and pretending that nothing is going on. The time has come for action. We cannot take it anymore. And I say action. Kill them all. Root them out. That's what I say. Mother Gwen! Okoko has spoken the truth. We are no women. But even then, women bite and claw. We must do something. Let us ostracize them first. Then we wouldn't be held responsible for their for, for the abominations. Let all the your cross come out with the with the force of our forefathers. <laughs> We call you Mother Goddess. We summon you. Chugadiama. Iwekala. Amadioha. Answer your summons. Whoever in our clan that shall commune with the members of the new religion. May he die the death on a key day, on a year day, on a four day, on a four day. Whoever of our clan that shall relate with the messengers of the white man in any form, in the market, in the stream, in the farm, shall die the death. On a care day, on a year day, on a four day, on a four day, whoever that shall contact with the deserters, of our ancestors. May he die the death. On a key day. On a year day. On a four day. On a four day.
God of our land. We dare you. Fight your own war. something. I don't want to die. Huh? I don't want to die. But no Dibia will come. We are ostracized. The elders won't come too. Now, let me call Kiaga, the teacher. Uh, he will pray to his God. Yes. Call him. Call him quickly. Oh, the python is staring at me. He's laughing at me. No! Don't call him. Don't call him. His God will not hear me. He does not know me. Che, I'm tired. Okoli, my husband. There's no Python here. We are all alone. Now pray. Pray. Oh, have to pray. Pray. Oh. I will not pray to Kiaga's God again. Then call your ancestors. Pray to them. If that's what you want. My ancestors. No. I will not pray to them. They are dead. Dead and deaf. I will not. What am I? Can't reach you. Call my brother. Call Uchi, my brother. He will not come. I pleaded with him. But he fears the offer. He said it will kill him. The offer? He fears it. He fears the offer. <laughs> <laughs> So he's afraid to die. <laughs> he was not afraid to, 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 to die. <laughs> now, I shall no more be needed to recite the catechism before I'm considered eligible for the only one I've got. No! Yay! 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 <laughs> want to die. I, I don't want to die. I, 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 
don't want to die. In truth, our father said, the grasshopper which is killed by Okpoko must have had its ears filled with wax. Okoli, my brother, you asked for it. You have confirmed your knowledge of your son's conversion. What will you do? Nothing. At first, I thought it was not possible. But when I look back and remember what my father was, always weak, always afraid of fighting, that's why it is. Look at me. A mighty difference from both of them. And here, at the very last moment, my own son deserts me for some cultural lepers. I have nothing to do with him. Oh, Erika, let me tell you, I have put a curse on him. Say Yes. Abu? Yes. A man will only starve if he has just one kitchen from which he feeds himself. I have other children. Ebu Bediki, you have said a lot. The next matter is about your return. Mm. I have been thinking about it. Have you settled a day for your return? Um, two or three market days hence. But first, I, I must call a feast for my mother's people. Um, but for them and you, this past seven years would have been dreadful. Okonkwa, who more fear is waiting for you? And a lot has happened since your absence. It's you. Only you can move them and change the tide. <laughs> we will see. Um, I thank you very much for everything, Obirika. I will build my own OD personally when I return. Thank my people for helping me construct my heart. I thank you for everything. <laughs> How many times will I hear that? My ear is full of that. Ah. Uh. Oh, Bierica. Oh? Go well. Thank you. Tell my people that I am coming home. <laughs> <laughs> The python is a mere snake which your people worship in fear. Yes, teacher. But he died the day after he killed it. No one has ever killed a royal python. There is nothing royal about the snake. I know Koli should not have killed it. <clears throat> you are a teacher here, I suppose? Yes, Mazi. Excuse me. 
Welcome to our mission. Do I take you to the mission house? There is no need. Where is my son? Your son? Oh, I, I don't know which of the boys around is your son. Mm. What is his name? What is your mother's name? Uh, Fetch my son or you are dead. Is everything all right? Yes. Uh, I was saying yesterday, when somebody does you a good turn, you have to say thank you. Um, it has been seven years since we left Umovia. And to keep a man and his family for that length of time is not very easy. Yes. So as I told you, um, it is going to be a very big feast because I intend to invite every living member of my mother's family, relatives, descendants of Okulu, who died over 200 years ago. So um, you must make sure you cook the best food in the clan. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you said we will kill three goods yes. for the feast. Mm -hmm. That's too much. Shut up your mouth. I decide what goes into the feast, not you. I am calling a big feast because I have the wherewithal. I may be dedicated. Shall I live on the banks of the river and wash my hand with people? You are right. My mother's people have been very good to me. So I must express my gratitude. Tomorrow is the feast, remember? Tomorrow? Yes. And um, in addition to the three goats I intend to slaughter, or even more, um, I will kill every available fowl in my chicken pen. That's about 20. Yes, or possibly more. I have also sent for the best palm wine in the clan. In fact, I am going to buy every pot available. Yes. Um, I want everything to flow here tomorrow. Bitter leaves, palm wine, pounded yam, everything. Um, and you must show the people that you can cook very well. <laughs> yes. Um, mm. but okay. If there is anything you don't have, please don't hesitate to tell me. Uh, did you talk to Moyo Moyago about the palm wine? He has the best. <laughs> now you can to told me about it. Okay. <laughs> Wait, we have to stop by going to the market. We don't have enough. <laughs>
Umuna I greet you. Okongo has brought us cola. We call upon our ancestors to accept this cola which Okongo, our son, has brought for us on this great feast which he has prepared for us. We ask for health and children. We do not ask for wealth, because he that has children and health will also have wealth. Yes, yes, yes. We do not pray to have more money, but to have more kingsmen. We are better than animals because we have kingsmen. An animal robs his aching flank against the tree. A man asks his kingsmen to scratch him. We pray for Okonkwo, his family, his children, that all shall be well with them wherever they go. Yes, sir. And that they should come again very soon to visit us. Yes, sir. We pray for all of us here. And we thank our gods that we have been alive to see this great day and witness this great feast prepared for us and our ancestors. He said, yeah. I break this color. <clears throat> um, I greet you. Um, when I first came here seven years ago, I was like the proverbial cock in a strange land, standing on one leg. Today, seven years after, I now know why our people say, Neka, mother is supreme. I can never forget how Obuevi Mezwe, Obuevi Ogu, Obuefi Amiku and others worked so tirelessly to ensure my rehabilitation. 
Um, I don't know what else to say except please accept this small calling out. It is not intended to repay you for what you have done for me all these seven years. Uh, a child does not pay for his mother's milk. But because I think that kinsmen should meet once in a while. So um, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you and please accept this small call or not. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. If I say we did not expect a big feast, I would be suggesting that we do not remember how open-handed our son Okonkwo is. But we all do know him. And we expected a big feast. Okonkwo, no. thank you. In these days, when younger men consider themselves wiser than their sires. It is good to see a man doing things the grand old way. May all that you have put out return to you tenfold. When a man calls his kinsmen to a feast, he does not do so in order to save them from starving. All of them have food in their own homes. When we gather together on these moonlit village grounds, it is not to see the moon. Everyone can see the moon from his own compound. When we gather together, it is because it is good for kinsmen to do so. Okonkwo, we thank you for bringing us together. Thank you. I thank you. Now I thank you. I thank you. Yeah. <laughs>